In this chapter, we will learn on how to identify rack potential issues. Probably the number one issue in any sort of rack environment is network connectivity and network addressing. The other thing that you could run into in a rack environment would be the network timestamp. A lot of organizations that use a rack environment will use a network time server because each individual node within the rack environment must be on the exact same time. If they are off as little as five seconds, a node eviction could occur. The first thing that we're going to take a look at would be our Etsy host file and our network addressing. So I'm just going to do a cat on Etsy hosts. We can be using DHCP. However, if we are using DHCP, we do need to identify at least a static subnet. There are two things where we really run into problems in a rack environment. First of all, we do not have the right network mapping or the network binding. Second of all, we are not mapping to the appropriate subnets. Now let's take a real close look at this. Here we have 192.168.2.101 that's mapped to our public address. Now you'll notice here on our private, it's 192.168.0.101. Our public IP and our private IP address must be on different subnets. These two IP addresses will be bound to separate NIC cards. I believe the 192.168.2 is bound to the ETH0 and the 192.168.0 is bound to the ETH1. If I come over here and I go to System, Administration, and I go to Network, I'm going to look at the specific IP address, and here's my NIC card for ETH1, and that is bound to 192.168.0. That's the zero subnet. You'll notice there is no subnet mask and there is no default gateway. That's very, very important. So for your private interconnect, you do not need a subnet mask, nor do you need a default gateway. Make sure that this particular subnet is different than the public subnet. Let me go ahead and cancel out of here. Now if I look at the ETH0, I can see that that is bound to the 2 subnet, and it does have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255.0, as well as a default gateway. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Now let's take a look at the VIP as well as the scan. In a rack environment, both the public, the VIP, and the scan address must be to the same subnet. So here, the public IP address is 192.168.2.101, the VIP is 2.111, and the scan is 2.201. The last octet doesn't really matter, but all three of those must be on the same subnet. When you run the root.sh script, that is actually what configures this VIP as well as this scan. It is only the public and the private IP address that will be specifically bound to a specific NIC card. After the root.sh script has successfully run, that is going to allow you to ping things like the rack scan. So we just see this here and it allows me to ping the rack scan. You'll know that the networking is set up if you can ping both the public IP address and the private IP address. So before you even begin a rack installation, each individual node in the rack must be able to ping the private interconnect and the public interconnect for all the other nodes within the rack. Rack 1 must be able to ping Rack 2's private network, and Rack 2 must be able to ping Rack 1's private network. But networking is one of the first major potential problems you will run into with a rack environment. The other thing that you will run into is the network time server. If I come over here and I type in date, now I can see here that the date is Sunday, July 28th. If I do an SSH over to the rack 2, and if I type in the date here, we can see that the dates here are pretty much the same. We want to make sure that the dates on each individual node within the rack are exactly the same because again, if they're off by five seconds, we could run into node eviction. Now I'm going to exit out of node two. Now there's some other commands that I can utilize to help identify potential rack issues. One of them is I have to verify that I'm in the ASM environment, which I am, and I'm going to issue a CRS CTL check cluster dash all command. The CRS CTL check cluster dash all is going to check the CRS and the CSS components against all nodes within the rack. 
And here we can see that on node one or rack one, the CRS is available, the CSS is available, as well as the event manager. And this is the exact same thing on rack two. So we can use the CRS CTL command to validate that the cluster software is up and running. The other command we can issue is a CRS CTL stat res dash T. And this is going to give us the status of each individual component within the rack or each individual resource within the rack. What we're looking for, if we scroll up here a little bit, we see this header of target. The target is online and the state is online. So what we're looking for is to make sure that if the rack expects it to be online, it is currently online. If rack expects it to be offline, is it online or offline? So we can see here that everything we see is just fine. The GSD is expected to be offline and it is offline. The network is expected to be online and it is online. So that is good. Another rack command that we can issue is OLS nodes. OLS nodes is going to identify all of the active nodes within the rack. If I do an OLS nodes dash H, this gives me all of the other flags. If I give it the dash N flag, that's going to identify the node number. If I give it the dash P flag, it's going to identify the private interconnect. If I give it the dash I flag, it's going to identify the virtual IP. I can give it the dash L flag for the local node. I can do a dash S to get the node status. So if I do an OLS nodes dash S, it's going to tell me that those nodes are active. And then I can give it the dash T flag to print the node type. And here you can see that they're active nodes and they're both unpinned. The dash G flag to turn the logging on. And then I can run it in debug mode with dash V. But again, you don't really want to do that with Oracle support. If I give it the dash C, that's going to give the cluster name. When we talk about rack potential issues, probably the number one thing that we run into in a rack environment is the networking. The number two is the network time protocol. The way that we can identify some of these networking issues is if we use the appropriate CRS commands and also verify our Etsy host files as well as our DHCP files.